Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. If you haven't seen this show before, uh, my name is Art Bergeron, and I'm an elder law attorney, and I'm here a lot. You've probably seen me at the Tisbury Senior Center, uh, and, and I, my day job, I work for uh, Myrick O'Connell doing nothing but elder law, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you haven't seen this show before, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Martha's Vineyard, that means they want to stay right here. They never want to move. They don't want to go to the mainland. They don't want to go to that other island, which we, whose name we will not use. They want to stay right home. So uh, we try to bring on, and my friend, my friend Sandy Cordobi has been co-hosting the show with me for like ever, for like, you know, years now, a long time because everybody knows her and, and, and she's this wonderful geriatric care manager in her day job. But, but the point of the show is to ha help you know the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about uh, in order to live in your house until you die. And usually Sandy finds these great guests because she's there and she knows everybody. But every once in a while I get one and because of, of, of COVID and therefore these Zoom shows, I get to suggest people that aren't, who aren't necessarily on island, but may be really, whose information really be, may be helpful to you. And today um, we have one of those. So, so Sandy, thanks for letting me bring, bring on my own, my own guest today. I appreciate it. So Steve Pepe uh, is, is, uh, has been working with a reverse mortgage funding company for um, a number of years. And I know if you've seen my presentations, you've heard me often say that if your goal is to live in your house until you die, and you, it, this, a, a reverse mortgage may be an ideal way of making sure that you can do just that by providing you with some extra funding, right? So I wanna, I'm gonna start off by just talking to Steve about in general what, what he's doing here and, and about reverse mortgages, and then we'll talk about some specific questions. So Steve, First of all, you've hit, you have been doing this for a long time. So who do you work with and, and, and how long have you been doing this kind of work? Uh, sure, thank you, Arthur. And, and Sandy, thank you for having me on. I work for a nationwide reverse mortgage lender called Reverse Mortgage Funding, LLC, or sometimes you see our name as RMF. Our Massachusetts branch office is in Marlboro. I'm the branch manager there. I'm a loan officer there, and I'm also something called an outside account executive there. I've been in the reverse mortgage industry working on the, the lender side for a little over 16 years now, and I am a former reverse mortgage counselor as well. I, I did counseling when I was the uh, staff attorney at one of the nonprofit agencies that does the reverse mortgage counseling here in the Commonwealth. And that's how I got into this business a little over 16 years ago. Long time, long yep, time. Yeah, I love it, I love and, it. And in the course of that time, you have you have done approximately how many reverse mortgages? Oh boy, we, it must be, uh, must be pushing a thousand by now, Arts. Um, but I've so spoken get, to so several get. thousand <laughs> potential customers and homeowners, but probably around a thousand of these. Yeah. You know. so, so you get you get all of this. So yes. So so let me start, and then you know, Sandy, please hop in with any, you know any questions as we're going along. Yeah, um, you know, one of the the there are a couple of you know first of all the 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 competition in terms of providing this kind of solution to seniors. Who have got a home, and there's but the, and they've got some other cash, but they're thinking maybe I don't have enough cash, and I want to make sure I have enough. The competition really is so-called HELOCs or home equity lines of credit that that folks have often heard of and can get from their local banks. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I want to be kind of talking about in the in the you know that you know how do the two of you kind of stack up. And, but I also want to kind of start by, by asking you just talk to talk about kind of what a reverse mortgage is and to deal with the most common reason why people tell me I'm never going to do a reverse mortgage because they just take your house. Sure. So can you just kind of talk about that? Can you talk about kind of what a reverse mortgage is and how it works and whether they take your house? Sure. So a a reverse mortgage is, is just another kind of home equity loan. It's a, 
it's a, it's a loan that enables you to tap into some of the equity in your home, some of the wealth you have built up in the four walls of your home, but you can't spend that equity, right? You, it, you, you can't go and take a brick out of your home and go down to the store and buy a loaf of bread with it. <laughs> so you have to release that equity somehow with, with some kind of tool. One kind of tool is a, a home equity line of credit or a HELOC. Uh, or a reverse mortgage is another kind of tool that enables a homeowner to do that. But a, a reverse mortgage has a couple of uh, different features, different, um, different things about them that make them different in, in, than HELOCs in some very different ways. First, there's a minimum age to qualify. So in, in Massachusetts, you have to be at least 60. There's two main programs here in Massachusetts. One, you have to be at least 60 to qualify. The other, you have to be at least 62. And with a reverse mortgage, it enables the homeowner to borrow money against their equity in the home and not incur a new mandatory monthly mortgage payment, right? So the deferment of a repayment or of a reverse mortgage or the required repayment of a reverse mortgage is deferred until the homeowners don't live in the house anymore. So it's a great solution for someone who might be on a fixed income, but for anyone who's age eligible, who owns a home or a condo and is looking to get at some of that equity and not incur a new mandatory monthly payment. Okay. The biggest misconception, Arthur, you, you, you hit right on it, is that the bank takes my house. And, and that's simply a myth. It is, it is not true. The deed remains the same. You're not handing over ownership of the home. You're not becoming a tenant of your home. Uh, I think some of the, the genesis of that myth may have, may have uh, originated in uh, you know, a really important thing that you have to keep in mind, not only with a reverse mortgage, but every mortgage that anyone in Massachusetts or throughout the country has. If you're taking out a mortgage against your home, you're making some really important but simple promises. You're promising you're going to pay the real estate taxes. You're promising you're going to pay the homeowner's insurance. And you're promising you're not going to let the house fall down around you. If you don't do one of those things, you're in trouble with any kind of mortgage, right? Your lender is not going to be happy. And if you don't fix that thing, they, they might have to start foreclosure. So my best guess is that might be where that myth started. But the way you stay out of trouble is pay your taxes, pay your homeowner's insurance, and keep the home in good condition. And by the way, now you have reverse mortgage money to be able to do that, right? So it, it makes it easier for you to keep up with all of those things that might otherwise be a challenge of being a homeowner. And, and, and can, you, can you contrast that, you know, briefly to the way that a, a, a typical uh, HELOC or home equity line of credit works? So if I, were, if I were kind of shopping and I was saying, I know I'm not needing money, you know, if, I'm, if I don't need money right now, and Sandy and I run, run into this a lot, you know, we've got folks who may not need money right now, but they, you know, they've got limited funds in the bank, maybe they're getting more frail, or they're worried that if they get frail, they may need more money to, put, to pay for home care or to you know, fix up the house. So they just want it and they, and they, and they lose sleep worrying about this stuff. And, you know, and I always tell my clients, I said, you know, you get to our age, you know, and Steve, I guess you're, you're getting close to my, Sandy's just a kid, you know, or at least she looks like a kid, but you know, we're getting old. You get to our age and it's like, you know, fame and fortune has passed us by. You just want to get a good night's sleep, you know? Sure. And, and, and but you worry, Oh my God, if something, you know, if something happens to me or something happens to my spouse, if I'm Frank and Mary, you know, we, you know, where's this money going to come from? And so they're, and so they're saying, you know, how do I have this guarantee? So there's this, there's this reverse mortgage and then there's this home equity line of credit. So can you just talk about how that works and then how the two compare? Sure, sure. So with a home equity line of credit, if Frank and Mary were to go to their bank and, and apply for one, uh, here's where it would differ from applying for a reverse mortgage. The real emphasis is on 
income qualifying. Frank and Mary are of a generation where they usually have paid all of their bills on time. Frank and Mary are of the generation that have among the best credit uh, out of any of us. It's that fixed income where Frank and Mary are going to get stuck. Their income might be social security. If they're lucky, they might have a pension from a job or maybe a VA pension or, or something like that. Maybe a stream of income through a 401k or an IRA that might be modest, but it's qualifying for an, a HELOC based on that fixed income source is where Frank and Mary are going to run into trouble. And what I find in talking to people is either they don't qualify at all or they qualify for a much smaller home equity line of credit than what would be useful to them to, to pay for what might be their future care needs or other cost of living needs that they may have. The reason for that really goes, if you look in your time machine backwards back to the the banking collapse and the, the real estate market collapse in 07, 08, 09, and the regulatory response to try to make sure we never get in that mess again as a country. Before, if Frank and, and Mary went 20 years ago to get a HELOC, if they fogged a mirror, they'd be able to borrow money, right? That it was very loose on lending money. Now the regulatory response to the mortgage lending industry it's very hard. There are a lot of hoops to jump through for Frank and Mary to qualify for a HELOC. And it's because of the regulatory response to make sure only people that can afford the monthly payment can get a HELOC or a regular home equity loan. With a reverse mortgage, we're looking a bit at, at income and a bit at credit. We have to do a review of Frank and Mary's income and credit just to make sure we're satisfied they can afford their real estate taxes and their homeowner's insurance. But that's it. It's a much lower bar that they have to overcome. And in terms of credit, we're looking at their track record in the last two years of paying their taxes, their insurance, and their other bills. They don't need a minimum FICO score to qualify where a HELOC they might. Uh, it's a much lower thresholds on income and credit to qualify for a reverse mortgage. With a HELOC, they can maybe get at some of that equity in the four walls of their home and spend it on things. But the moment Frank and Mary start pulling money out of that line of credit, they're going to have a regular monthly repayment obligation kick in. And it will usually be for a period of time, interest only payments. So, if their interest only is uh, is $100 a month on, on $20,000 that they pulled out, then they have to keep paying $100 a month and that $20,000 that, that $20, they borrowed never goes down. They're just keeping it level. But then they will get to a point where they have to make what we call a fully amortized payment of principal and interest. And that might be five years down the road, seven, 10 years down the road. And that's where Frank and Mary might encounter what we call payment shock. Now their $100 a month payment becomes a $700 a month payment. And then, uh-oh, now they're late on paying the light bill or paying their mortgage bill, or, or they have to make a decision, do we pay our HELOC bill or do we uh, cut down on groceries or gifts to the grandkids or something else, a choice they might not want to make. With a reverse mortgage, there's no payment obligation while they're living there. They're just taking money, using it for their care expenses or other expenses, and repayment is deferred until neither of them live there anymore. And, and until they sell the home, they decide to sell the home and they sell it, or they both move out for more than 12 consecutive months or they both pass away, right? So if, if, uh, if they're there for five years with a reverse mortgage and then uh, Frank has to go to assisted living and Sandy's helping him find a suitable assisted living facility to move to that's safe and competent, he moves into assisted living permanently Mary can live there with a reverse mortgage and still have access to the money 
not worry about paying it for as long as she lives there. Yeah. I, I just, I want to, I want to interview just because I, I, I haven't, Sandy hasn't asked any questions yet. And I just want to make sure up to this point that she doesn't have any, because I, of course I got a million of them, as you know, I talk a lot, but Sandy, <laughs> I, I know that we've, we've had, we've had clients together that who, who have taken advantage of this. Do you, do you have any particular things or particular problems that you'd want to have Steve talk about? No, I, I think the, the biggest thing that I want to do in this show is to help people with the myths that, you know, that are so common. I think many, many years ago, reverse mortgage was a bit different than it is now. And as I tell people all the time, it's a wonderful option for people who need to get at the equity in their home in order to meet their goals of staying home or getting into an assisted living for their spouse or loved one. Um, and, and people are afraid of them. And I think, Steve, you're doing a great job at helping people understand they're all HUD protected now. It's, this is, you're not going to lose your house. And, and to be able to use the reverse mortgage money to live the way that you want, and then whoever's going to get your house when you're done, when you're gone, when you die, um, can then maybe we can just talk about oh, how does this work when they're, you know, when Frank and Mary are both gone, what, how does this work? What happens then? Great, work. Great, great question, great, which, which I think relates also to, to the, other, the other piece of, so if you take money out using your reverse mortgage and you're not making any payments, so what's happening? You know, what is, you know, where, what, you know, because that's, that, you know, people have this sense, oh my God, I'm not making payments. And that's the reason why, you know, in a matter of months, you know, I, my house is gone. I've got no value in my house. So if you sure. can kind of deal with both of those issues, both really important, right? Sure. So Frank and Mary get a reverse mortgage. The, the analogy I use is think of it like opening a tab at your favorite restaurant that doesn't have to be paid back or settled up until some point way in the future. So Frank and Mary set up this reverse mortgage. In the first year, they're using, they use $10,000. In the second year, $10,000. In the fifth year, Mary has a major life event. They have to hire an agency to bring care into the home. Now, instead of 10,000 in a year, they're using $10,000 every single month. So they're using $120,000 in, in year five and 120,000 in year six. With a reverse mortgage, whenever they pull money out, that money they pull out goes into that tab right? The tab is going to be gradually increasing over time, getting larger and larger and larger. Companies like ours, the way we make money is we're charging Frank and Mary interest on the money they withdraw only. But guess what? The interest we're charging Frank and Mary also gets added into the tab. So they have this open tab the balance of which is gradually growing as they're pulling money out and we're charging interest and the federal government is charging a little bit in government insurance premiums over time. Now, one of them passes away. Nothing changes. Uh, statistically, it's usually Frank dies first. So Frank dies, marries a widow, lives in the home, can still use that money. And then sometime later, Mary dies. And between Frank and Mary, they've built up a balance between money they've pulled out and interest we've charged. They build up a balance of uh, $500,000. And let's say their Oak Bluffs home is worth $800,000, okay? So what happens? Within one year of Mary passing away, whoever is the personal representative of Mary's estate has to see to it that we get repaid our $500,000 within one year. So Frank and Mary went to Art Bergeron and set up an estate plan because they were smart and they did that while they were alive. Art drew up a will, healthcare proxy and durable power of attorney. And you know that, that will says that uh, the personal representative is their daughter, Jane. So Jane, Look, sees we mom and dad own this house worth eight hundred thousand. They owe the reverse mortgage company five hundred thousand. We are not going to keep the house in the family. We're going to sell the home. So within one year, Jane has to find a realtor, 
list it for sale, have some open houses, hopefully find a buyer and we'll sell the house for the 800,000 it's worth. At that closing table, we'll get a check for our 500,000. And then she gets the check for the 300,000 that goes into the estate. And the will that Art drew up says, what happens to that 300,000? Who gets it, right? But let's say something different happens. Let's say when Mary passes away in the future, it's in the midst of a terrible real estate market, right? And they still owe $500,000, but now the home is only worth 400,000. It's worth half of what I said in my first example. So we're they're what's called underwater or upside down on their mortgage, right? So if they owe 500,000 and the house is only worth 400,000, then daughter Jane, still her responsibility to see to it that the loan is repaid within a year and they're gonna sell the home. So they find a buyer, they sell it for 400,000, the value. We get a check for 95% of the $400,000 value so the reverse mortgage company gets a check for 380 and that's it. But Frank and Mary still owe another $120,000 on the loan. Who's paying it? Jane's not paying it. The estate's not paying it. If Frank and Mary had a life insurance policy with a million dollar death benefit, that's not paying it. Because none of them are responsible. None, None of them are responsible. Who is responsible? Uncle Sam, right? Part of the cost of setting up the reverse mortgage is insurance premiums into this government mortgage insurance fund. The government mortgage insurance fund is going to write a check to our company for the $120,000 remaining on the debt. It, a reverse mortgage is something called a non-recourse loan. Non-recourse means this, the house and the house only is what's going to pay us back, okay? If there's a lot of uh, you know, family estates and, and legacy properties on the island that have been in home and families for generations, if Jane doesn't wanna sell the home, the family doesn't wanna sell, just have to see to it that we are paid back within one year. Maybe that means refinancing us out of the picture. Maybe Frank and Mary have life insurance on their life or other assets that can be used to pay the loan off and keep the home and the family. Doesn't matter to the lender. Lender just needs to be paid back within the year. And I think, and, the, and that's the main thing. For, you know, first, you've got a year. You've always got a year. And by the way, even kind of as a, as, as a contrast to the HELOC, where it, you, you die and your death is a default under the mortgage. Bad enough that you died, but you also, def by dying, defaulted under the mortgage. So technically the bank can kind of go after you anytime. Whereas with the, with, the, with the reverse mortgage, you automatically have a year. That's one. And two, only if, if, the, if the debt can't be paid from the value of the house, it evaporates, right? The house goes but the rest of the debt evaporates. So none of the kids, are I think uh, once again, oftentimes people will say, I don't want this. You know, I don't want my kids to owe all this money. That's part of, you know, it's just the, 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 a part of what you're gonna be paying um, or a part of that monthly charge, which you won't be paying, but which will get added in if, if, if it would be to cover that program, to cover that, that mortgage insurance program which is run by the federal government. You know, these are these are all mortgages. This whole program was specifically federally authorized a long time ago. I think during the Reagan administration is what, what I it seems to be what That's I right. That's right. The Reagan administration created the pilot program. And the first one of these under the pilot program was was written in, in 1989. So they've right. been so, around for that long. So it's been around, yeah, but it's just been around for a long time. So I think that's just a great summary. Uh, I, I would ask, and, you know, and thanks very much to the folks at, at, uh, M, at M, uh, MBTV for doing these shows, right? And, and, and if you can get them your information, you know, so that they can put up you know, your contact information and stuff. So if people have got any questions, I just wanna close by saying, 
you know, I'm not trying to sell your reverse mortgage. I'm telling you, here are some alternatives, right? But don't, all I'm saying is, if you're trying to figure this out for yourself, for yourself and your spouse, for your parents, don't throw this option out. Figure it out, get the information. You can always say no, you know, you're not gonna get punished by asking, right? Um, but I think for some people, and Sandy and I both know people on the vineyard for, for whom this has been a lifesaver, a lifesaver in terms of providing the resources, especially to allow you to stay home by covering some of these home care costs. So Steve Pepe, thank you very much. Uh, Sandy well. Cordobi, from now on, you find all the rest of the guests. That's my guest. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> yeah, and, and, and folks, this is a hard one to be. This is, a, this is a good one. And folks, we hope you enjoy this presentation and, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. Thank you very much. Thank you.